Today I'm going to talk about some more advanced part writing paradigms using the Neapolitan chord. But we're going to start by reviewing the part writing that I talked about in the first lecture. So if you have your handouts with you, I'd suggest that you look at it. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you an example from the handout. In the first lecture, I talked about the fact that when you're resolving a, a Neapolitan chord, a flat 2-6 to 5, the chord must resolve in a specific way. Namely, the flat 2 chord has to go down to uh, scale degree 7, and the flat 6 scale degree needs to go down to scale degree 5. So we have Ra to T and Le to Sol. Okay, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, the, in this case, the flat 2 is B flat. It leaps down a diminished third to G sharp. The F is Le, and it moves down by half step to E. The fourth note, the, the D, which doubles the D in the bass, moves in contrary motion to the bass. Okay, and it's very important that you never go from the B flat to the B natural in the same voice. You want to have this, this cross relation of the B flat and the B natural in two different voices, perhaps even separated by a diminished octave or double octave. Okay, if we were going to a 5 7 chord, it would still be true that Ra goes to T and Le goes to Sol, but now we would hold Fa over and we'd go to an incomplete 5 7 chord. In order to have the 5 7 chord, we simply can't put the fifth in the chord because Le can't go to Re and Ra can't go to Re, so we can't have a Re at all. It simply has to be an incomplete 5 7 chord. Okay, so let me talk about this little sentence here that I just sort of slipped into the handout. It says that sometimes the flat scale degree 2 passes through Do on its way to T, with the tonic note harmonized either by a cadential 6-4 or by uh, 7 diminished 7 of 5. Okay, so take a look at these examples on the board. In every case, I've written the flat 2-6 with the flat 2 in the soprano. It doesn't have to be this way, it's just, it happens a lot because that's a very strong melodic note, but we could put the B flat in an inner voice, but this is how the example on the handout had it. And then we're going to a 5 chord with T in the soprano, uh, and that happens in each of the other chord progressions as well. So here we have a passing scale degree one, we're filling in that diminished third with half step motion. So to go to the cadential 6-4 here, I see that I have a wrong note in the bass, I'll correct that. Lay goes to sol, and the may fills in the passing motion between fa and re. Um, notice here that I have parallel fourths, which are okay, but you must avoid parallel fifths. Okay, so if the B flat were below the F and we went to the fifth AE, we would have parallel fifths. That's something for you to watch out for. The other chord that can be used as a passing chord to connect the, the flat 2 6 with the 5 is the 7 diminish 7 of 5, okay? There we have the half step passing motion in the soprano, and we're also going to have it in the bass, okay? So we've got B flat A, G sharp in the soprano. In the bass, we're going to have D, D sharp E. Okay, let's think about what 7 diminish 7 of 5 is. Uh, a diminished 7th is going to be D sharp, F sharp, A, C. Okay, so Le is going to turn into La and then resolve down to Sol. And here again, we'll have the passing motion, uh, Fa, Me, Re, and the chordal seventh will resolve down as it has to. And sometimes you can have that passing note without any kind of accompaniment. 
you would be right to call this a passing tone. You would also be right to hear this as being some kind of a first inversion seventh chord with the B flat moving to the chordal seventh and then the seventh resolving down to down by step. Let me play these three progressions for you on the out of tune piano. Uh, we're in the key of A minor and I'm going to start by setting up the key. Okay, so here's the first progression. Here's the second one. Here's the last one. And of course, we want to resolve to tonic. I'd like to have you look in your textbooks at page 565, if you will. We're going to look at example 24.2. Okay, so this is example 24.2 and it's on page 565 of your textbook. First of all, the first example, uh, example A, shows you in a different key, now we're in the key of C sharp minor, it shows you one going to flat two six, going to five, going to one. Notice how the bass steps up, all the other voices move down. Compare the voice leading and the notes of that chord progression to the more familiar chord progression, one, four, five, one. Do you see how everything is the same except this one note here is a C instead of a D natural? Uh, I'm sorry, a C sharp instead of a D natural. And here, a slightly different example, one, two diminished six, five, one. Again, everything is exactly the same except instead of a D natural, we have a D sharp here. Okay, but in all of these examples, we have basically the same notes and we have the same contrary motion between the upper voices and the bass. Here is this chord progression. In major, it's exactly the same. The bass steps up, all the upper voices go down. Ra goes to T, F natural, D sharp. Uh, lay, C natural. In this case, it doesn't go to soul. I don't like that but I guess it, it looks like he's letting you do that and go to a complete 5-7 chord. I won't mark it wrong, but I'm, I'm not a believer. And then in E major, here are the two chord progressions I just showed you. Um, flat 2-6 going to 5, but this time with a passing cadential 6-4 chord in between them. Okay, so this is an E, G-sharp, B chord in second inversion. And notice how we have the passing motion in all of the voices. Here we have flat 2-6 going to 5, and we have this chromatic passing motion in the bass. So we have fa, fi, sol, and again we have ra, do, ti in the soprano. This progression combines the previous two progressions starting with the 7 diminished 7 of 5 and then going to the cadential 6-4, so you can use them both. Okay, and this is just reminding you that it is never okay to go from Ra to Re, from flat 2 to natural 2. Also reminding you to avoid the parallel fifths, which are very common, either when you're going from 1 to flat 2-6 or if you're going from flat 2-6 to, to a cadential 6-4, you also need to look out for those parallels. So that's a little bit about part writing, and I think that it would be good if you would practice this on your own. Maybe look at some of the worksheet problems in the textbook that follow chapter 24. Uh, see if you can do some of the part writing and keep, this, keep these ideas fresh in your head. As I said in an earlier lecture, flat 2 can be tonicized, and in this way it's different from the two diminished triad that you have in minor keys. As you'll recall, you can never tonicize a diminished triad, but you can tonicize a major triad. In minor keys, the, the 6 chord is also 5 of flat 2. So if you take a look at the board, you can see that in A minor I've written a 6 triad, 
and I've shown it going to a flat two six chord. F is the dominant of B flat. So if you see this progression, you can either call this six, which is what it is, or you can call it five of flat two. It's sort of like you can call a subtonic chord, a major seven chord that goes to a three chord. You could either call it capital Roman numeral seven, or you can call it five of three, uh, and they're both correct. If we want to have a, a seventh chord, a major minor seventh chord leading to the flat two chord, now we have to call this five seven of flat two because this is a chromatic chord. Notice that E flat is not part of the key signature of A minor. We've taken sol and we've lowered it and we've turned it into se, spelled S-E. So we have F-A-C E flat, the seventh resolves down, we go to a B flat major chord. And of course we could use different inversions of the five seven of flat two. For example, five four two of flat two is very common. That resolves to the flat two six. In a major key, we can have the same chord progression, except now, instead of calling this chord six, it's a mode mixture chord and we call it flat six. It's the same, it's the same chord, but it's not built on the regular scale degree six in A major, so we call it flat six. So flat six in a major key is the dominant of flat two six or flat two, um, and we can call this chord either flat six or we can call it five of flat two. I'd like to look at a few examples in your textbook. We're going to be looking at example 24.5, 24.6, and 24.7. Okay, so this is example 24.5. It's on page 568. We're in the key of C major, and there are a few different things that happen here. There's uh, some tonicization of five. There's a little bit of mode mixture here leading to a five chord. And then here we go to a flat six chord, which is a full-blown mode mixture chord. It's very surprising in the context. And that flat, flat six chord goes to flat two six. So the author here is calling it flat six, but if you called it a five of flat two, you would be correct. The translation of this text is given in the paragraph above. It is a wondrous feeling that forever cripples the heart when we experience our first disappointment, a feeling that we never get over. Here's the translation from the heart. When we, the first disappointment, experience ein etwas, a something that we never get over or that we, we do not uh, lose. Um, so this something, this disappointment, you could perhaps say a little fancifully, causes the sudden shift to the parallel minor, C minor, with this flat six chord, um, and then moving even farther in the flat direction with the D flat chord before finally moving to the dominant. And before we listen to this, let me have you look at this second chord in measure 67. We have a minor cadential 6-4 here, and then this chord, can you figure out what it is? It's an F-sharp, A-natural, C, E-flat chord. How would you label that? It is a 7 diminished 7 of 5, and it's in second inversion, so it's a 7 diminished 4-3 of 5. So this has the flat 2-6 chord going to 5, but in between, we have a cadential 6-4 with a minor third, and we have the 7 diminished 7 of 5 in an inversion. Here's what this sounds like. Let's look at another example. This is example 24.6. We're in the key of G minor, 
And that means that the flat two chord is an A flat major chord. So what we're going to hear is the flat two six tonicized by its dominant. And then later on, we're going to go to the flat two six chord again. And it will go to a cadential six four before going to five seven and going to one. Let's see, does it give us a translation? Uh, yes, the sun moves in its course like yours, my sorrows deep in the heart, always to rise tomorrow. So like yours, my sorrows deep in the heart, always the next morning rise again. Always the next morning rise again. So I think I think the chromatic sound of the flat 2-6 chord is very appropriate here for setting up a, a sense of deep feelings and perhaps deep sorrow. Let's listen to this example. <laughs> Okay, and finally I want to look at the next example, which is example 24.7. This is an example where the chromaticism of the Neapolitan chord creates a great sense of excitement along with the repeated notes and the tremolo in the left hand of the piano. We're in the key of D minor, and so we have a tonic chord. Uh, here's where we get the Neapolitan chord. We get a, a flat two and then a flat two six. And then we go to a first inversion 5-7 chord, a 5-6-5. Five, five. So notice the diminished third here, the, the E flat, C sharp, D. And then we have a little bit more chord progression, 1 to 1-6 one, six, to 6, either back to 1 or maybe to 6-6. Six, six. And then here's the B flat dominant seventh chord. It's B flat, D, F, A flat with the A flat in the bass, this would be 5, 4, 2 of flat 2. And it goes to flat 2, 6 for a measure, and then it goes to a cadential 6, 4, and then to 5, and then to 1. Okay, so listen for the, for the excitement and the suspense of this example, and listen to how the chromaticism helps to create that sense of excitement and suspense. With that, I've covered what's in chapter 24. We will continue to work with the Neapolitan chord, and in particular in class, we'll continue to work on part writing and also on analysis examples that use the Neapolitan chord.